Variety is an American media company owned by Penske Media Corporation. It was founded by Syme Silverman in New York in 1905 as a weekly newspaper reporting on theater and vaudeville. In 1933 it added Daily Variety, based in Los Angeles, to cover the motion picture industry. Variety.com features breaking entertainment news, reviews, box office results, cover stories, videos, photo galleries and more, plus a credits database, production charts and calendar, with archive content dating back to 1905. Topic. History Variety has been published since December 16, 1905, when it was launched by Syme Silverman as a weekly periodical covering theater and vaudeville with its headquarters in New York City. Syme was fired by the Morning Telegraph in 1905 for panning an act which had taken out an advert for $50, and said that it looked like he would have to start his own paper in order to be able to tell the truth. With a loan of $1,500 from his father-in-law, he launched Variety as publisher and editor, in addition to Syme's former employer The Morning Telegraph. Other major competitors on launch were the New York Clipper and the New York Dramatic Mirror. The original cover design, which is very similar to the current design, was sketched by Edgar M. Miller, a scenic painter, who refused payment. The front cover contained pictures of the original editorial staff, who were Alfred Greeson, Epis W. Sergeant Chico or Sheik and Joshua Lowe, as well as Syme. The first issue contained a review by Syme's son Sidney, also known as Skiji, based on the childish lisping of his name, who was claimed to be the youngest critic in the world at seven years old. In 1922, Syme acquired the New York Clipper, which had been reporting on the stage and other entertainment since 1853, and folded it two years later, merging some of its features into variety. Also in 1922, Syme launched the Times Square Daily, which he referred to as the world's worst daily, and soon scrapped. During that period, Variety staffers worked on all three papers. After the launch of The Hollywood Reporter in 1930, which Variety sued for alleged plagiarism in 1932, Syme launched Daily Variety in 1933, based in Hollywood, with Arthur Unger as the editor. It replaced Variety Bulletin that was issued in Hollywood on Fridays. Daily Variety was initially published every day other than Sunday but mostly on Monday to Friday. Unger was editor until 1950, followed by Joe Schoenfeld 1950-1959 and then Thomas M. Pryor 1959-1988, who was succeeded by his son Pete. The Daily and the Weekly were initially run as virtually independent newspapers, with the Daily concentrating mostly on Hollywood news and the Weekly on U.S. and international coverage. Syme Silverman had passed on the editorship of the Weekly Variety to Abel Green as his replacement in 1931. He remained as publisher until his death in 1933 soon after launching Daily Variety. Green remained as editor from 1931 until his death in 1973. Syme's son Sidney succeeded him as publisher of both publications. Following his death from tuberculosis in 1950, his only son Sid Silverman, was the sole heir to what was then Variety Inc. Young Sid's legal guardian Harold Eriks oversaw Variety Inc. until 1956. After that date Sid Silverman, managed the company as publisher of both the Weekly Variety in New York and the Daily Variety in Hollywood, until the sale of both papers in 1987 to Connors Publishing for $64 million. He remained as publisher until 1990 when he was succeeded on Weekly Variety by Gerard A. Byrne and on Daily Variety by Syme's great-grandson, Michael Silverman. Sid became chairman of both publications. In 1953, Army Arkard's Just for Variety column appeared on page two of Daily Variety and swiftly became popular in Hollywood. Arkard broke countless exclusive stories, reporting from film sets, announcing pending deals, giving news of star related hospitalizations, marriages, and births. 
The column appeared daily for 52 years until September 1, 2005. On December 7, 1988, the editor, Roger Watkins, proposed and oversaw the transition to four color print. Upon its launch, the new look variety measured one inch shorter with a washed out color on the front. The old front page box advertisement was replaced by a strip advertisement, along with the first photos published in Variety since Syme gave up using them in the old format in 1920. They depicted Syme, Abel and Sid. For 20 years from 1989 its editor-in-chief was Peter Bart, originally only of the weekly New York edition, with Michael Silverman, Sid's son, running the daily in Hollywood. Bart had worked previously at Paramount Pictures and the New York Times. In April 2009, Bart moved to the position of Vice President and Editorial Director, characterized online as Bafo No More, Bart Up and Out at Variety. From mid-2009 to 2013, Timothy M. Gray oversaw the publication as editor-in-chief, after over 30 years of various reporter and editor positions in the newsroom. In October 2012, Reed Business Information, the periodical's owner, formerly known as Reed Elsevier, which had been parent to Connors Corp., in the United States, sold the publication to Penske Media Corporation. PMC is the owner of Deadline Hollywood, which since the 2007-2008 Writers Guild of America strike has been considered Variety's largest competitor in online showbiz news. In October 2012, Jay Penske, chairman and CEO of PMC, announced that the website's paywall would come down, the print publication would stay, and he would invest more into Variety's digital platform in a town hall. In March 2013, Variety owner Jay Penske appointed three co editors to oversee different parts of the publication's industry coverage Claudia Eller as editor, film, Cynthia Littleton as editor, TV, and Andrew Wallenstein as editor digital. The decision was also made to stop printing Daily Variety with the last printed edition published on March 19, 2013 with the headline, Variety Ankles Daily Pub Hubbub. In October 2014, Eller and Wallenstein were up to co-editors-in-chief, with Littleton continuing to oversee the trade's television coverage. In June 2014, Penske Media Corporation PMC entered into an agreement with Reuters to syndicate news from Variety and Variety Latino powered by Univision to distribute leading entertainment news to the international news agency's global readership. This dissemination comes in the form of columns, news stories, images, video, and data-focused products. In July 2015, Variety was awarded a Los Angeles Area Emmy Award by the Television Academy in the Best Entertainment Program category for Variety Studio, Actors on Actors, a series of one-hour specials that take viewers inside Hollywood films and television programs through conversations with acclaimed actors. A second Los Angeles Area Emmy Award was awarded in 2016. A significant portion of the publication's advertising revenue comes during the film awards season leading up to the Academy Awards. During this awards season, large numbers of colorful, full-page, for your consideration, advertisements inflate the size of variety to double or triple its usual page count. These advertisements are the studio's attempt to reach other Hollywood professionals who will be voting on the many awards given out in the early part of the year, including the Academy Awards, the Golden Globes and various Guild Award honors. Topic. Circulation The first issue of Variety sold 320 copies in 1905, paid circulation for the weekly Variety magazine in 2013 was 40,000 source, BPA audit statement, 2013. Each copy of each Variety issue is read by an average of three people, with an estimated total readership of 120,000 source, Ipsos subscriber study, 2013. Variety.com has 17 million unique monthly visitors. Source: Google Analytics, 2015. Topic: Editions. 
Variety, first edition published December 16, 1905, is a weekly entertainment publication with a broad coverage of movies, television, theater, music and technology, written for entertainment executives. It is published weekly and delivered internationally. Daily Variety, first edition published September 6, 1933 and last published March 19, 2013, was the name of the Los Angeles-based Hollywood and Broadway Daily Edition. Daily Variety Gotham, started in 1998, was the name of the New York City-based edition which gives a priority focus to East Coast show business news and was produced earlier in the evening than the Los Angeles edition so it could be delivered to New York the following morning. Variety.com, launched in 1998, is the internet version of Variety. It was one of the first online newspapers to charge for access when it launched. In June 2010, all content on the website became paywalled. However, the paywall was removed in April 2013 although access to additional content, such as the archives, require subscription. Variety on the Go Variety is also available as an app on the iPad, iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Phone. This app is an interactive content-driven platform providing entertainment industry updates on the go. At Variety is available across multiple social media platforms and channels, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Tumblr, with videos streaming on Variety.com and on the Variety. YouTube channel, on December 15, 1906, Variety published its first anniversary number that contained 64 pages, double the size of a regular edition. It published regular bumper anniversary editions each year, most often at the beginning of January, normally with a review of the year and other charts and data, including, from 1938 onwards, lists of the top performing films of the year and, from 1949, the annually updated all-time rental chart. The editions also contained many advertisements from show business personalities and companies. The 100th anniversary edition was published in October 2005 listing Variety's icons of the century, as well as the large anniversary editions. Variety also published special editions containing lots of additional information, charts and data, and advertising, for the following film festivals. Cannes Film Festival MIFED Film Market American Film Market Daily Variety also published an anniversary issue each October. This regularly contained a day-by-day -day review of the year in show business and in the 1970s started to contain republication of the film reviews published during the year. Older back issues of Variety are available on microfilm. In 2010, Variety.com allowed access to digitized versions of all issues of Variety and Daily Variety with a subscription. Certain articles and reviews prior to 1998 have been republished on Variety.com. The Media History Digital Library has scans of the archive of Variety from 1905 to 1961 available online. Topic. Culture For much of its existence, Variety's writers and columnists have used a jargon called slanguage or varieties, a form of headlinies that refers especially to the movie industry, and has largely been adopted and imitated by other writers in the industry. The language initially reflected that spoken by the actors of the early days during the newspaper, such terms as legit, boffo, sitcom, sex appeal. Payola and striptease are attributed to the magazine. Its attempt to popularize Infobon as a synonym for information superhighway never caught on. Television series are referred to as skeins, and heads of companies or corporate teams are called toppers. In addition, more common English words and phrases are shortened. Audience members becomes simply odds, performance, perf, and network becomes net. For example, 
In 1934, the founder Syme Silverman headed a list in Time magazine of the 10 modern Americans who have done most to keep American jargon alive. According to the Boston Globe, the Oxford English Dictionary cites variety as the earliest source for about two dozen terms, including show biz, 1945. In 2005, Welcome Books published the Hollywood Dictionary by Timothy M. Gray and J.C. Suarez, which defines nearly 200 of these terms. One of its popular headlines was during the Wall Street Crash of 1929. Wall Street lays an egg. The most famous was Sticks Nicks Hick Picks. The movie prop version renders it as Sticks Nicks Hicks Picks. In Yankee Doodle Dandy, 1942, Michael Curtis's musical biographical film about George M. Cohan starring James Cagney. In 2012, Rizzoli Books published Variety, an illustrated history of the world from the most important magazine in Hollywood by Gray. The book covers Variety's coverage of hundreds of world events, from the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, through Arab Spring in 2012, and argues that the entertainment industry needs to stay aware of changes in politics and tastes since those changes will affect their audiences. In a foreword to the book, Martin Scorsese calls Variety, the single most formidable trade publication ever, and says that the book's content makes you feel not only like a witness to history, but part of it too. In 2013, Variety staffers tallied more than 200 uses of weekly or daily variety in TV shows and films, ranging from I Love Lucy to Entourage. In 2016, Variety endorsed Hillary Clinton for President of the United States, marking the first time the publication endorsed a candidate for elected office in its 111-year history. Topic. Office locations Variety's first offices were in the Knickerbocker Theater located at 1396 Broadway on 38th and Broadway in New York. Later it moved to 1536 Broadway at the 45th and Broadway corner until Lowe's acquired the site to build the Lowe's State Theater. In 1920, Syme Silverman purchased an old brownstone building around the corner at 154 West 46th Street in New York, which became the Variety headquarters until 1987, when the publication was purchased. Under the new management of Connors Publishing, the New York headquarters of the weekly variety was relocated to the corner of 32nd Street and Park Avenue South. Five years later, it was downgraded to a section of one floor in a building housing other Connors publications on West 18th Street, until the majority of operations were moved to Los Angeles. When Daily Variety started in 1933, its offices were in various buildings near Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard. In 1972, Sid Silverman purchased a building at 1400 North Cahuenga Boulevard which housed the Daily's offices until 1988, after which its new corporate owners and new publisher, Arthur Anderman, moved them to a building on the Miracle Mile on Wilshire Boulevard. In late 2008, Variety moved its Los Angeles offices to 5900 Wilshire, a 31-story office building on Wilshire Boulevard in the Miracle Mile area. The building was dubbed the Variety Building because a red, illuminated, Variety sign graced the top of the building. In 2013, PMC, Variety's parent company, announced plans to move Variety's offices to their new corporate headquarters at 11,175 Santa Monica Boulevard in Westwood. There, Variety shares the nine story building with parent company PMC, Variety Insight, Variety 411, and PMC's other media brands, including Deadline.com, HollywoodLife.com, GoldDerby.com, Rob Report, and the West Coast offices of WWD and Footwear News. By the time of Syme Silverman's death in 1933, in addition to the New York and Los Angeles offices, there were offices in Chicago and London. Eventually Variety had fully staffed offices based in Sydney, Paris, Rome, Copenhagen, Madrid and Munich. Topic. 
Film reviews On January 19, 1907, Variety published what is considered the first film review in history. Two reviews written by Syme Silverman were published, Path's comedy short An Exciting Honeymoon and Edison Studios' western short The Life of a Cowboy directed by Edwin S. Porter. Variety discontinued reviews of films between March 1911 until January 1913 as they were convinced by a film producer, believed to be George Kleina, that they were wasting space criticizing moving pictures and others had suggested that favorable reviews brought too strong a demand for certain pictures to the exclusion of others. Despite the gap, Variety is still the longest unbroken source of film criticism in existence. In 1930, Variety also started publishing a summary of miniature reviews for the films reviewed that week and in 1951 the editors decided to position the capsules on top of the reviews, a tradition retained today. Criticism was a side job. Staff were hired as reporters not as critics. Reviews for many years were signed with a mostly four-letter pen name rather than the reviewer's real name. Names include Syme, founder Syme Silverman and the first to write a film review for the paper Rush, Alfred Greeson Sheik, Epis W. Sargent Jolo, Joshua Lowe Abel, editor Abel Green Anby, Vincent Canby, 1951-1957, later the New York Times chief film critic. Army, Army Archard. Bessa, Peter Basis. Bing, Claude Binion. Cart, Todd McCarthy, chief film critic, 1979-2010. Jean, Jean Arneal. Hall, Hi Hollinger, 1953-1960, 1979-1992 Murph, Arthur D. Murphy, the principal film critic from December 1964 until October 1978 Pry, Daily Variety editor Thomas M. Pryor Sid or Skig, publisher Sidney Silverman, Syme's son Sid, publisher Sid Silverman, Syme's grandson the Skirt, Hattie Silverman, Syme's wife. Ung, first daily variety editor Arthur Ungar. Variety is one of the three English language periodicals with 10,000 or more film reviews reprinted in book form. These are contained in the 24 volume Variety Film Reviews. 1907 to 1996. Film reviews continue to be published in Variety. The other two periodicals are New York Times as New York Times Film Reviews 1913 to 2000 in 22 volumes. Harrison's Reports as Harrison's Reports and Film Reviews 1919 to 1962 in 15 volumes. In 1992, Variety published the Variety Movie Guide containing a collection of 5000 abridged reviews edited by Derek Ellie. The last edition was published in 2001 with 8500 reviews. Many of the abridged reviews for films prior to 1998 are published on Variety.com unless they have later posted the original review. Topic. Obituaries The complete text of approximately 100,000 entertainment-related obituaries 1905 were reprinted as Variety Obituaries, an 11-volume set, including alphabetical index. Four additional bi-annual reprints were published for 1987-1994 before the reprint series was discontinued. The annual anniversary edition published in January would often contain a necrology of the entertainment people who had died that year. Topic. Charts and data Variety started reporting box office grosses for films by theater on March 3, 1922 to give exhibitors around the country information on a film's performance on Broadway, which was often where first-run showings of a film were held. 
In addition to New York City, they also endeavored to include all of the key cities in the U.S. in future and initially also reported results for ten other cities including Chicago and Los Angeles. They continued to report these grosses for films until 1989 when they put the data into a summarized weekly chart and only published the data by theater for New York and Los Angeles as well as other international cities such as London and Paris. As media expanded over the years, charts and data for other media such as TV ratings and music charts were published, especially in the anniversary editions that were regularly published each January. During the 1930s, charts of the top performing films of the year were published and this tradition has been maintained annually since. In 1946, a weekly national box office survey was published on page 3 indicating the performance of the week's hits and flops based on the box office results of 25 key U.S. cities. Later in 1946, a list of all-time top grocers with a list of films that had achieved or gave promise of earning $4 million or more in domestic U.S. and Canada rentals was published. An updated chart was published annually for over 50 years, normally in the anniversary edition each January. In the late 1960s, Variety started to use an IBM 360 computer to collate the grosses from their weekly reports of 22 to 24 U.S. cities from January 1, 1968. The data came from up to 800 theaters which represented around 5% of the U.S. cinema population at the time but around one-third of the total U.S. box office grosses. In 1969, they started to publish the computerized box office compilation of the top 50 grossing films of the week based on this data. The Love Bug was the number one in the first chart published for the week ending April 16, 1969. The chart format was changed in 1989 to reduce the list to a top 40 and display a summary of the sample city theater grosses rather than publish the theater grosses separately. The sample chart was discontinued in 1990. Arthur D. Murphy, who joined Variety in 1964 and worked there until 1993, was one of the first to organize and chart domestic box office gross information that became more available during the 1980s and report it in a meaningful form setting a standard for how film box office information is reported today. Murphy used the weekly sample reports to estimate the total U.S. weekly box office compared with previous annual totals which was reported in Variety's U.S. box office report each week. The sample also allowed Murphy to estimate the market share percentage rankings of distributors. In 1976, the Variety Box Office Index (VBI) was launched, where each month's actual key city box office tally, after seasonal adjustment, was simultaneously expressed as an index number, with 1970 as a whole being used as the base initially. The current month's VBI expressed the monthly box office performance as a percentage change from the base year. The index was published until 1991 giving a history of comparable monthly and annual box office performance for the past 20 years. During the 1980s, Daily Variety started to publish a weekly chart of the domestic box office grosses of films as compared to the top 50 chart in Variety which was based on a sample of key markets. Variety started to publish this weekend box office report together with the sample top 50 chart later top 40 until they discontinued the sample chart in February 1990 with the weekend box office report being their main source of box office reporting. In 2009, Variety launched a chart showcasing the top performing film trailers ahead of theatrical release in partnership with media measurement firm Visible Measures. Topic. Other variety products In 1937, Variety compiled and published a radio directory compiling a record of events in radio such as program histories, ratings and popularity polls. It published an annual edition for at least the next three years which are available on the Media History Digital Library. 
Peter Cowie joined Variety in 1989 and his International Film Guide, which had been published annually since 1964, became Variety International Film Guide with reports from countries on the year in cinema as well as information of film festivals. It continued to bear Variety's name until 2006. In 1999, Cowie published the Variety Insider with detailed information on the year in entertainment as well as historical information. A second edition followed in 2000. In January 2017, Variety launched the Variety Content Studio under the leadership of CMO, Dia Lawrence, and executive editor Steve Gatos. The studio creates custom content for brands. Topic. Variety Business Intelligence Variety established its Data and Research Division, Variety Insight, in 2011 when it acquired entertainment data company, TV, Tracker.com. Its film database was announced in December 2011 as FlixTracker, but was later folded into Variety Insight. Variety positioned the subscription service as an alternative to crowd-sourced websites, such as the IMDb. The database uses Variety's existing relationships with the studios to get information. The New York Observer identified the main competitor as Baseline Studio Systems. In 2014, Variety Insight added VS Core, a measure of actors' cachet and bankability. In 2015, they partnered with Scriptnoted, a social media website for film scripts. Topic. See also The Hollywood Reporter Deadline Hollywood, sister competing entertainment trade news publication also under ownership of Penske Media Corporation List of film periodicals